with all of our working groups, advisory groups, and our organizational uh, advisory group. Just just coming to and sharing uh, safer space agreements with respect to what all participants can help make the space a safer space. We know making guaranteeing a completely safe space is very hard to do, but we want to make sure that we're continually reflecting on this piece and ensuring that that all participants have voice. So if during this meeting um, we we are talking about topics, of course, that are, are triggering and sensitive to folks sometimes. So I uh, really want to be respectful of that and understand that uh, that everybody's here uh, being gracious with their time. So if people leave for whatever reason, that's that's uh, everybody's um, pur purview to do. Um, really want to understand and, and make sure that everyone understands the intersectionality of what safe space means to each of us and in moving forward. Um, you'll see the form survey that comes out at the uh, after this meeting. We'll ask for any other input that we can uh, that we can do or or to create an even safer space. So please don't hesitate to let us know that or of any needs that you may have. And um, it sounds like we have a lot of uh, collective expertise here at the table, but always encourage uh, folks if they are triggered in any way to really lean in on that, that inner support circle around them. And, and Sharon and I always stay back afterwards to help uh, support in directing in different ways if we're able to as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out or uh, to, to lean on those supports that you find most supportive uh, when triggered or um feeling touched by some of the emotions that may come out during these conversations sharon i believe this is me so uh just as a review for for this group we we review it to kind of ground the well not kind of to ground our work uh whether it's with our student advisory our parent caregiver guardian advisory or uh this this advisory group um Really appreciate uh, uh, your expertise and and your thinking and input and feedback uh, to the work that we'll be uh, reviewing from our working groups. And uh, for those of you who are new to the group today, we are going to review that really quickly as well. So our working groups are are kind of our groups that are uh, safe schools action plan um, specific. Uh, we'll go through those, and this group will have. Uh, eyes on all of that work, as will our parent caregiver guardian group and student group. Um, your perspective um, is uh, very appreciated. Um, and I've got to say here as well that um, in the participation in the advisory doesn't uh, grant the use of HWDSB logo or um, likeness. So just in order to inform our, instru our structure better, like the safer uh, spaces information, um, really hoping that um, either if you feel safe to share the feedback with us as we're going through in the chat, or if you're able, um, please do so. We review the chat and, and actually work it into our notes as well. Um, after each meeting though, if you don't have an opportunity to do that because you don't have access to chat, or you don't have an opportunity because you'd rather not share publicly. Uh, there is an anonymous forum survey that we only Sharon and I see um, that you can provide that uh, information on as well. Uh, really, we reflect after each meeting and think about what went well, what didn't what go well, and how can we do better next time. Uh, and then uh, we really, again, as I, I mentioned during our Safer Spaces Agreement slide, we really want to cater this so that uh, it provides you an opportunity to to share your expertise uh, in a way that's most comfortable for you. So as I mentioned, uh, you can see at first in terms of this this group uh, is the community partner advisory table or advisory group. You can see there the three three cogs in our uh, our complex machine that um, we are are very quickly unpacking. It seems quicker and quicker every day now, Sharon. Uh, we have 10 working groups that will be uh, focusing on different areas of our Safe Schools Action Plan. So student voice, uh, both at the system and school levels. Um, we have our school improvement planning, um, bullying response, supervision, uh, or where bullying happens specifically. 
uh, special education, bullying policy and procedures, healthy relationships, character education, uh, data collection, privacy and performance monitoring. And the reason I bring that up is we have a, uh, our student advisory group as well as our parent advisory group have all um, um, expressed interest in participating in one of these groups. And the hope is, is that we can have representation in those working groups that's informed not just by by HWDSB staff. We want to have as much cross representation on these working groups as possible. If folks on this team feel as though that's something they would be interested in, by all means, that will be on the form that comes out after this meeting today. Uh, please share with us any interests you may have. And really, it's about bringing the work of that working group back to this uh, community partner advisory. Uh, to keep everyone updated, but also to inform inform the larger group on uh, the direction that the working group is taking. So again, there'll be an opportunity to share that later on. You can see this. This is our parent representation. We we um, and um, it worked out nicely in that uh, the first thing is as many of you who are involved in policy development and implementation. I can appreciate we are reviewing our bullying prevention intervention policy and with that comes some strict timelines as we'd like to have that done by the end of the school year. Um, we have six parents that have uh, indicated an interest in working with that group. If anybody would like to work with that group, we are meeting as a working group for the first time next Monday. Um, I'll, if you express an interest in that through the forums, you the uh, the time and the meeting link for that um, for that working group. Um, as you might imagine, with this many uh, working groups on the go, coordinating and in terms of our safe schools action plan phased approach at implementation, uh, some of these will not be happening right away. Some are happening sooner than later. Um, as, and as I just described, the policy uh, review group is starting on Monday. So. Every, anyone and everyone's welcome. Please just let us know. Go ahead, Sharon. I just want to say Tuesday. Oh, we, sorry, we switched it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, lots of meetings, lots of different dates. It was Tuesday, it was moved to Tuesday. <laughs> and I think Sharon brings up a good point. It was moved to Tuesday for a good reason. Uh, we met with our parent advisory group this week we meet with we've separated it in two for those parents that are able to meet with us during the day and would prefer that we meet with that first group during the day and then we meet with the second group outside of the school day because that's what works better for them um we we had a little uh discrepancy in terms of feedback on when we would host it because we were going to have it um down to one meeting and we thought no that we would keep it at two to honor as much voice as possible in in and throughout this process uh, as a result we met with those groups this week and uh they in, both indicated a desire to meet again and talk more about the policy so we've honored that and we're meeting with them on monday again um, as opposed to holding the working group meeting that was originally slated for that time Jay, can I just add one more quick thing? Absolutely. Um, just in terms of the form that uh, that Jason is going to send out. So at the end of the last meeting, when the form went out, one of the questions that we had asked both the parent group as well as um, this particular table was to give us feedback on the length of meetings and the frequency of meetings and the best time of day for us to hold these meetings. We didn't receive a lot of feedback from the community partner table. Um, we suspect that that's because much like us, when we join a table and a meeting arrives in our inbox. We look at where it fits in our schedule, if we're able to attend or not, and then we schedule around it. Um, that being said, we do want to be absolutely responsive to the needs around this table. So if the time of day that we meet or the the um, length of time that we meet is something that is important for you and your organization, please feel free to provide us when that, with that information when the next form goes out. We we have scheduled this meeting for an hour and a half. What we heard from the parent groups was they would prefer to meet more frequently, but for a shorter duration of time. So they've asked that the meetings that they engage in are an hour. 
um, but that we meet more regularly as opposed to once a month. So again, that's completely open um, as well time of day. So as Jason had indicated, we had half of our parents who wanted to meet during the working day, uh, during the school day, half who wanted to meet outside of the school day. So we've accommodated that structure. Um, we've made an assumption in scheduling this meeting that people would like to meet uh, during their working day. But again, um, we're open to hearing otherwise from you. And if morning is better than afternoon, that's important as well, because we really do want to try and accommodate uh, to make this work for you. So thank you. Go ahead, Jay. Thanks, Sharon. So um, given the, the the policy review that we'll be undertaking, this is really, um, we've already covered most of the information in this slide. Uh, Sharon just talked about meeting days, times, lengths uh, that we had for parent advisory, but again, we don't want to make any assumptions, so please let us know. So, now directly to our Safe Schools Action Plan. This is straight from the action plan and really want to uh, highlight through the uh, expert panel's review and incorporation into the action plan recommendation number six uh, to review policy and procedures from an uh, equity, anti-racism and uh, anti-oppressive perspective. And, um, and really happy to have on our working group, Johanna Otite, our human rights and equity officer. Uh, who also is uh, very well versed in the development and the review of policy and procedure. So uh, excited to have her joining us on Tuesday. Um, as most of the folks here would be aware, but some perhaps not, um, really the, the, the RSA Schools Action Plan uh, wants this, to, this review to be performed in collaboration with as many people as we can have review it. Um, we really want to make sure that it's a living document that's reviewed on a, a time period that is determined by someone other than us uh, that we are able to do within the confines of legislation. Uh, but really, uh, annual reviews or, or biannual reviews to, to update and change as needed because we know uh, our world is changing every day, every hour. and. Um, our documents need to be more reflective of the world that our students are living in. And I'm going to pass it over to Sharon. Thanks, Jay. So as Jay mentioned, we're going to spend the rest of our time together um, looking at the current policy that we have around bullying prevention and intervention. It is a policy that was written in 2015, and we're looking at that as merely a place to start and to get your individual and collective thinking around that existing policy. But we wanted to take a moment just to talk about the structure that we have within our organization, which may be very similar um, to what many of you have in your organizations, but we know that terminology certainly varies uh, across organizations and even across school boards. So we have um, policies and every policy has at least one, but in most cases, several procedures that are connected to the broad policy. Our policies are um, connected very closely to legislation. So where there is legislation that requires us to do something particular, um, you will often find the language of legislation included in our policy. With respect to talking about bullying prevention and intervention, there's legislation within the Education Act. There's also um, a new uh, policy program memorandum. It's called PPM 144 um, that speaks to what school boards uh, need to be thinking about when they are creating a policy. And the policies are typically very high level overarching guiding documents. They set direction, they speak to our, or, our the purpose of the policy, our organizational commitment to the policy, to the type of work happening within the policy guiding principles. Sometimes there may be definitions included and then there will be a section on actions that need to flow from the policy. So the policy really speaks to um, the what, what is this about and why do we need to have it? 
Then we have the procedures. So the procedures are those operational documents that actually are used by staff um, and can be used by families and by students to actually see how we are operationalizing what is included within the policy. So we have um, received a lot of feedback around the investigation process when there is a concern that's been expressed or a report that's been made around bullying. So we need a procedure that very specifically and clearly speaks to what the investigation process is, what will happen, when it will happen, communication, etc. So this afternoon, our focus is really on that policy piece. And in a moment, I'll walk through some of the timelines. The procedures are going to be developed alongside the policy, but the timeline for the work within our, our action plan continues through to the end of next year. We know the work will never be done. There's always a need to go back and review. Um, but between um, now and before now, this school year and next school year, that's when the procedures that are going to support the policy will be developed. And much of that work will happen simultaneously. A lot of the procedural development is going to happen through the working group structures that Jason already spoke about. And of course, draft versions of all of those will come to this table. So if you're not in a position where you're able to join working groups, um, that's okay. We're completely respectful of that. There will be this structure that will again provide the opportunity. When we meet in this structure um, to seek input, there will always be the opportunity to provide that input directly in the meeting, but then we'll also ensure that we always follow up with a communication with a Microsoft form where you can add additional information. It may be something you think about away from the table. It may be something that, you know, a colleague at work mentions or someone at home mentions, or it may be that it's something that you're, you're not, um, comfortable to share with a larger group, but again, there will always be that anonymous form where you can provide that. Our hope is that there is no wrong door to gather the voice and perspective from um, those who are most directly impacted by the work. And very concretely, just before I get Jay to flip to the next slide around timelines, um, when we talk about policy and talk about procedure, uh, just to give an example. So one of the um, elements that I believe that we will see um, included in the policy in terms of a guiding principle, just because of the conversations we've been having and recognizing the importance, um, I think we'll see a comment in the policy around a guiding principle of engaging families um, in responding to incidents of bullying. Not necessarily those words, but we recognize the extremely important role that students uh, and their parent, guardian, or caregiver play in that process. So the policy would speak to a guiding principle or a commitment to ensure families are included. The procedure will actually tease out what does that process look like? How do we communicate with students? How do we involve students? How do we involve families? So the policy is the high level. And then the procedure is the more detailed operational part of that. As we're working through the policy today, there may be some things that you're thinking about and you're thinking, I, I kind of want to include this, but it might be more of a procedure. I encourage you to put forward all of your ideas and your thinking. What we found as we were working with the parents is uh, sometimes parents would suggest something that would sound like a procedure, but what actually was embedded in it was a really um, you know, this is what needed to happen, but it needed to happen because over here there's a high level commitment that need to be made that supported that item in happening. So there is no, um, there are no wrong suggestions. Anything that you're thinking about this afternoon, regardless of whether it's a policy or procedure, please put it on the table because um, all of that all of what we put together today and what has come from the parents uh, will all be going to the working group, as Jay said, on Tuesday for them to uh, to work through. Jay? And just in terms of um, voice, I think we've talked a little bit about this already, and this is our strong commitment to ensure that as we are reviewing this policy, it's policy 5.2, um, that we are going to ensure that we use multiple lenses in that work, really focusing on equity, inclusiveness, anti-racism, anti-oppression. 
as well as Indigenous cultural safety. And we're looking at three main sources for, uh, for the voice. So the first is through what we've already heard from the panel's process. We have a lot of information that we have heard from our community. And when I say community, I mean our students, our parents, guardians, caregivers, our, our community partners and our staff around um, changes that need to be made within the policy. Of course, we have the structures that we've created that Jay shared a little earlier, and all of those tables having the opportunity to be and are being invited in to providing thinking around the policy, and also more than once, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then really looking at existing structures that are already in our schools, um, particularly those structures that represent students who are currently or have been historically underserved by education, we really need their voice. Um, and so that's all part of the process. So when Jay flips the next slide, which speaks to timelines, um, we are looking at uh, everything that we gather going into a draft revision, which will go to the policy committee on March the 2nd. Between March the 7th and April the 1st, there will be a uh, further opportunity for us to reach out to gather more voice. So there will be um, the document in, we'll come back to this table um, as well as to other tables, but the work of the working group is going to be to think about how do we want to reach out even broader during that window of March the 7th to April the 1st in terms of responding to that first draft. Um, I will share that as part of our traditional policy approach, the draft will be on the website and individuals can go to the website and they can provide feedback, but we know that we need to do more than that. And that's gonna be part of the work of the working group that is meeting next week. Then all of the data that's been collected will go to RNA as our research and analytics department. I apologize for the short form. Research and analytics will take all of the data. They will put together a report on what was shared and then that will go back to the working group. The working group will make revisions. Um, their draft final will come back to this table as well as the parent table and the student table for review, uh, ultimately for a final version to go forward to policy at the end of May. Uh, as I mentioned, procedures will be developed throughout and the hope is that the new policy will be in place for the September school year and um, staff training, of course, would, would follow. Okay. So what we'd like to do now and for the remainder of our time together this afternoon, oh, yep, you're good, Jay is we want to dig into the existing policy. So you should have received the policy via email yesterday, but we're going to pop it up on the screen and how um, we're going to work through it is I'm going to share the policy um, with everyone and facilitate the conversation. Jason is going to be documenting in the chat what he hears you say. We're going to take the transcript of the chat and that's going to be provided to the working group so they can see the suggestions and the comments of this group. But Jay is going to enter them directly, uh, recognizing that not everyone has access to the chat. We're going to work through uh, each of the areas of the policy. So we're going to work through the purpose, the guiding principles, the outcomes, the definitions, and action required. And we're not going to work through each of the questions, but we, we globally want the table to think about, you know, when you think about the sections and the work that you do and those that you work with, you know, what would you say is working and not working and what needs to improve? what's missing. And then one of the pieces we're looking for at the very end, we may not get to it today, but we've got some, we've got time on this one, is how do we best ensure that families have the information on what the policy is? Um, and again, recognizing uh, the, the depth and breadth of experiences at this table and connection to this work, uh, really appreciate your thinking on where we need to, to make some changes and what gaps um, do you see or have you heard from those that you work with. So I am going to share the policy with everyone now and I'm going to check with Jay to see if I am. Thank you. And I'm going to check to see that it's big enough. Is the font big enough? 
Daryl's nodding, I think. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> so I'm okay there in terms of the font size. Okay. Excellent. Um, so the first section is the is the purpose section. Um, and I should mention we'll use the hands up feature. So the hands up feature is in your toolbar. It looks like a happy face with a raised hand. You click on that. You'll be able to put your hand up. And we want to start with the purpose. So I'm going to read the purpose again. This is the 2005 policy. Um, I will say right from the outset that neither Jane or I were part of the work uh, that happened to create this policy. And I only share that because in the parent group, people were really apologetic. They would say, I'm really sorry, but no apologies are necessary at all. That's why we're here. We're here to make it better um, or to change it completely. So the purpose of this policy is to reinforce that Hamilton Wentworth District School Board recognizes the importance of healthy relationships and a positive school climate to create a safe, inclusive, and caring environment. Bullying will not be accepted on school property, at school-related activities, on school buses, or in any other circumstance, e.g. online, where engaging in bullying will have a negative impact on the school climate or adversely affect a student's ability to learn. All board employees who work directly with students must respond to all student behaviors that may lead to bullying. So we'll start with that and I'll open it to the floor for questions, comments, suggestions. And I, and I'm, I, you know what, I didn't see whose hands went up first. So hold on, I'm just gonna pull my participants up so I can do a better job of that. And oh, Jay, is your hand up? It is. I just your mic's too close to your your mouth. I don't know if anybody else noticed. There's a lot of uh, staticky noise and stuff. So just as a heads up. And, and that's all I have. A little, I will move it further away. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. OK, Susie, over to you. Hi. Um, uh, in that first section, there's two things that kind of stood out to me is where it says in the first line about a positive climate to create safe, inclusive and caring environment. I think that equitable should be added there. I know that inclusive and equitable sometimes are interchangeable, but I think it's very important to put equitable in there. And in the last line where it says the student's ability to learn, I think that, and, and it's kind of come through here a couple times for me, we should add um, their mental wellness as well. So um, again, I think that this is an opportunity to ensure that all of these, you know, mental health committees, equity, equity committee and stuff, it's all kind of put into one and it, and it reflects all of that. Got it, Susie. Thank you. I so have more I'm, for the other parts, but I'll put my hand up later. Okay, no, <laughs> no problem. And I'm going to, Jay is populating the chat. I should mention that I know you can't see the chat, Susie. Um, so I'll paraphrase for you. If, if those who can see the chat, if something isn't paraphrased, if one of your suggestions isn't accurately paraphrased, please let us know um, because we're trying to capture the essence of what you would like shared with the working group. And Susie, what I heard you say is that we need to be explicit. Equity needs to be added into the environment and that um, wherever I'm going to say globally wherever we say learn in the document it actually needs to be learning and mental health and well-being throughout everything right I, am I accurate uh, Susie yeah I actually with the the yes the equitable for sure the the mental health and well-being um, uh, it's funny I just had a meeting this morning with the social worker from the board at Nick school and the term uh, that she said they're trying to use a lot is the mental wellness because uh, it all fits in but like sometimes the well-being is how you get to the wellness and stuff so I'm not sure if it's easier to put mental wellness but that's again whatever the board wants to use I just thought I'd add that part nope really helpful thank you thanks and I've got Ali, Cindy, Blaze and Nadia. Ali? Thank you. Um, wondering whether it says bullying will not be accepted if just putting a period right there um, amplifies the statement um, and then this may include and, and just continue the sentence and even bolding that part because that's 
probably the most one of the most important statements there is it doesn't matter where it's just won't be accepted. Um, second to that. The responsibility of who should be in it, I think, might be considered in this. This is a responsibility of not just the students, the parents, the educators, the community partners. Um, and whether that falls in the purpose, I think it almost may come at the end of the purpose. Great suggestion. Further down in the document, there is a little bit of commenting around rules, but I think as you've articulated, the purpose of the policy does need to cover everyone who has a connection to supporting this important work. So your recommendation is that the um, perhaps the final statement in the purpose speaks to the responsibility not only of school staff, board staff, but also students, parents, community partners, and that we need to look at ensuring that piece around bullying not being accepted needs to stand on its own. Mm -hmm. the, the where is important, but bullying will not be accepted, period, is a stronger mm -hmm. statement. And, and if that's even bolded, because I see you use bold below it, it's it stands out because right now it's in the middle, it's buried and, you know, it is the focus. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And over to Cindy. Hi, thanks. Um, I think, um, I think these are fantastic ideas and I'm sorry my glasses are broken. So I'm like trying to read this. My computer's not working. So it's on a, on a cell phone, of course. <laughs> so when it, it says that um, when it's related to school activity, school bus, any other circumstances, e.g. online, there's a lot of issues. I think we need to add something in there. Any other circumstances relating to students of the HWDSB. Um, I'm trying to get the accurate wording of there's many other circumstances that we've come across where students have been bullied outside school board property, but these are students of the HWDSB where it affects, it affects the home life too. And we need to put in there that the, what goes on outside the board is still part of a board problem also so just online is not enough we need to add it's a not enough. we need to add more in there got it so cindy your thinking is i just want to make sure i have it accurately mm -hmm. reflected that the other circumstances while online is part of an other circumstance there's a lot more than that and we need to provide more detail around more detail other circumstances all hwdsp students staff whoever is involved got it okay perfect and you said you were trying to think of some other language yeah it's not quite working right now <laughs> no no no. it is totally okay yeah. i was just going to, i was just going to say yeah. continue to think about it because mm -hmm. there will be the opportunity through the form that we send out after the meeting to provide us with some uh, additional language and thinking but so i do really great. i do think that putting bullying will not be accepted is a fantastic idea okay perfect and i've got blaze Hello everyone. Um, just thanks again for um, holding this space to for us to bring our best thinking forward. I think um, just kind of um, building off of what Susie and Ali were, were talking about, I think um, the policy presents an opportunity for us to, to rethink like our accountability to this work as community partners. Um, so that bolded line there, all board employees, I think um, to further um, kind of um, uh, emphasize on the accountability of all community members, including us as uh, like official community partners um, to include us there. And I think, you know, further, um, you know, this is a procedural idea, but, you know, further, you know, adding this into partnership agreements and things like that to, um, to, to really expand um, on that. Um, I believe that this policy as is written, you know, years ago, I think it, um, is focused on you know staff and board employees, but I think that we play a really, really big critical role in this also. I think um, if this is the place for that language to be included, um, then yeah, I I think that we should we should be in there. Thank you. 
Thank you, Blaze. Great suggestion. So ensuring that we move beyond the um, the the role and the accountability again of just employees right in the purpose statement, building in community partners and look at even operationally once the policy was approved, how does this work become part of partnership agreements uh, for those organizations that HWDSB has ongoing partnership agreements with so that it becomes part of the shared commitment of the organizations together? Did I paraphrase okay? Thank you, yes. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I've got Nadia next. Yes, sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I agree. I think someone here said, I apologize, I don't know who said it, but mental wellness definitely um, needs to be put in there. And um, my suggestion would be instead of weather, just the feeling I got with reading this, I guess <laughs> subconsciously, is um, when we put like where and all of these things, it's like your mind goes to, if you're a bully, like, well, what's not included in there kind of thing. I've worked with so many students that, you know what I mean? So I would say um, whether on or off school property, I feel like there's too much there, like not in this situation and not in this situation and not here. I would just say like point blank, whether on or off school property. Also, um, I would start with that, like after saying the part about, you know, inclusive and caring environment, bullying will not be accepted, period. Um, I would I would also add this in. I think this is so important. Bullying has adverse effects on student mental wellness and their, their ability to learn, but also that it, it has a lasting impact. And I think this is something that people don't realize is that well into midlife, you know, I'm meeting people as a coach who were myself included, who are still traumatized by the bullying that they've experienced as children. So I think that's really important. Thank you, Nadia. And great yeah, suggestions. Yeah, and sorry, one more thing. Um, oh, maybe, of course. Maybe the word collectively, um, where all board employees who work directly with students, whatever, collectively as a community, maybe that word could be kind of put in there somewhere. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great, Jack, great suggestion. So capturing, again, support. I think it was Susie who initially mentioned ensuring mental wellness is including, included. Uh, recommendation that rather than having I'm going to describe it as a list. Um, a list encourages thinking of exceptions as opposed to on off school property, covers all of the possibilities. Important that we recognize not only the immediate, but also the future adverse effects that bullying has on an individual and the lasting impact. And looking in that bolded statement around board employees, which we've heard about expanding the scope of that, um, building in language around collectively as a community. So it is speaking to that broader purpose of a togetherness in terms of the work. Yes. Thank you. Got it okay? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And I've got Jack and Sue and then Susie. Jack. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, so the thing that that sticks out to me is I see the word purpose at the top. And purpose implies to me like a a reason for uh, a thing aiming to be achieved, kind of like a, a yeah a reason for the reason for a thing, and it sort of implies like a verb, an action. And when I when I read the purpose, I it, it seems like the thing that is being aimed at is reinforcing. Uh, so I read it, the, the purpose of this policy is, so the purpose is to reinforce, to reinforce what? To reinforce that HWDSB recognizes. So the purpose of the policy is to reinforce a recognition. And I wonder if that's, it, it's, it seems to me like maybe is, is, is it supposed to be more like the purpose of the policy is to decrease bullying. The purpose of the policy is to make sure people have the tools to, to keep students safe rather than merely the, like it, it almost reads more like a statement of vision or like a, uh, 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 a selection of priors or a kind of a statement of belief rather than uh, like the, the purpose of the policy is to 
bind the hands of the school board to do a thing. Um, so it, it almost seems less like a, a purpose and more like a vision or something. And that, that's my, my comment on that. And that maybe the, the last the bolded statement, all employees who work directly with students must respond to student behavior that may lead to bullying. That's like, a, 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 like a, a, an action that one commits to. And so I wonder if maybe there's just a way to change around the order of things or the wording or to kind of make it a little more goal oriented or, or uh, action oriented. Great suggestion. So it's when you read it, it's feeling more of a vision as opposed to actually speaking to what we expect to see. Why are we doing this? It's speaking more globally as a um, as a vision statement. So maybe it the, the information there needs to live somewhere else in the document, but not in the purpose of why we have the policy, because the purpose really needs to be about the why. What's the reason for having this policy? What do we expect it to do? Yeah, I just wonder, is is the purpose really to reinforce a recognition? The, the, per, the, the reason the board has the policy is yeah. to reinforce our recognition of important things. Yeah. yeah. It's probably more like to keep kids safe. Yeah, exactly. Nope, great suggestion. Thank you. Then I've got Sue and then Susie. Sue. Thank you. I have three quick points. Uh, the first is in the uh, sentence that talks about, let me have a look here. Um, we're, we're engaging in bullying will have a negative impact. I'm not sure where bullying wouldn't have a negative impact. So I think I agree with everyone, like just cut a lot of that out. The other piece was when we, in the bolded part, when we talked about um, board employees, even if we make it broader, um, who work directly with students, I would argue that whether it's direct or indirect, if we have knowledge of something, we need to step in and do something about it. And my third piece is when we list um, uh, in the last sentence in the first paragraph, um, we're, you know, it has negative impact on the school climate. And then we talk about children. Um, I think if we want to make this youth focused, the needs of the children come first. Great suggestions, thank you. I should mention on the right, when I look over to the right, that's my screen that has the policy on it. So if you see me looking over, that's what I'm looking at because I'm trying to capture the sections where your comments are, so thank you. So thank you, Sue. So the um, uh, appreciate three key areas, negative impact, always negative, don't really need that statement. Uh, the comment around, uh, directly with students it should be direct or indirect um, or language in that area and that we should always have students um, first before we think about anything else and certainly students before the climate so thank you for that and i've got susie next hi again <laughs> Um, I just want to clarify because this is it says bullying prevention and intervention. Is this just student focused or is this the board's bullying and intervention policy as a whole? Because we know and this is a point that I had later and many people have here is bullying is not just by student or student to student. It can be student to educator, educator to student, educator to educator, etc. So I think that it, so first of all, Sharon, is this just about the students or it like is it a, an all encompassing bullying and intervention policy? So it is a great question. The intent behind it is that it is a policy that is about students and that what of course would flow from it would be the procedures that are connected to students. However, my yeah but is that as we're having conversations, if we are hearing from groups that, I mean, we have staff specific um, policies around um, safety in the workplace, harassment, um, but if we hear from groups as we're having these conversations that the policy needs to be broader and include statements that includes bullying of staff, and then obviously it would be separate procedures that would need to be developed then that's part of the work that we would take to the working group. So while the intent is students, if we hear differently, that can shift. So thank you for that. So saying that I still believe that it should be 
so when it says all employees working with students rep uh, like to respond about behavior, I think that this has to go that all em board employees or however we encompass parents, community, et cetera, is if they recognize educator to student behaviors that that needs to be addressed. So if I'm an EA, for example, and I am in a classroom with a teacher, and I feel that a teacher is bullying a student, it's my responsibility to bring that forth as well in whatever policy, if that's another policy outside of how you deal with that internally, like an HR policy, right? But I think that that needs to be in here because, again, I, I know there's a, bun a number of people, probably a few in here, that have that issue of that gets overlooked and the students are always blamed and it's not always the student's fault. Got it completely. The other thing is, I'm wondering if maybe this is something that can be talked about. I feel that having prevention and intervention in one policy is forcing a lot of different things into one policy. So prevention is proactive, intervention is reactive, and I know they go together, but it just might be something to think about as we go through. Um, we know again, the prevention of the bullying awareness, this, the, that, the, this, the, that, all that kind of stuff, which is important, but it needs, there's a lot more on intervention and, and different proactivity. So that's just a point to keep in mind. Great suggestion. Thank you, Susie. And thank you also for the recognition that um, this should not and does not apply to um, student to student bullying either. If there is a, if there is, I'm going to say, an adult to student bullying situation happening, um, regardless of the the role that the individual has, or the you know whether they're working directly with students or indirectly with students, etc., that should be included here as well. Did mm -hmm. I capture it right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. You know where that comes from from me, so you can. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you for putting that on the table. So I've got a few hands still, but I don't know if they're legacy hands from before or if they're new hands. So I'm just gonna ask, um, Nadia is a new hand. Okay, no, are, is Nadia, is your hand a back? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Am I unmuted? Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay, good, <laughs> thank you. So I agree with Susie with that, um, the whole um, uh, teacher to uh, student, whatever, and then staff. But I, I just feel like that's also putting a lot in one document for policies because we'd probably have to define, right, what bullying is, what it looks like. And in all um, different dynamics, it's going to, it's going to be a different definition, right? So I'm just wondering, I don't know how it's going to look um, later, but just kind of putting that out there now, um, just like she said, that intervention and uh, prevention there's too much to put in a document. I also would feel the same way about this. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and it's the it's the balance between keeping the policy as concise as it can be, but also recognizing what needs to be included in it and you know where is the place where things are uncoupled or built in in order to have it concise and complete. Um, and then recognizing the role of procedures that will flow from that. Thanks, Nadia. Okay, so I don't see any other hands and really appreciate um, some folks I can see are populating the chat as we go along. So thank you for that and please continue to do that. I'm going to move us to the next section, which is the section on the guiding principles. So the guiding principles, um, I will, I'll read through them and, and then we'll open it up as we did previously. And again, um, feel free to populate the chat or, or to, to put your hand up and we'll work through some thoughts around these. So guiding principles have four bullets followed by the responsibilities of staff. So guiding principles, every student deserves to feel and be safe in school, on school grounds, on the school bus and at school events and activities. Safety is essential to good learning. Students learn and teachers teach more successfully when schools are safe. 
If a student misbehaves, the principal decides on what steps to take to help the student improve his or her behavior. All staff within HWDSB have a responsibility to model caring, respectful interactions, respond to incidents of bullying, raise awareness of bullying behavior, and help to reduce its long-term effect on all students, treat everyone with dignity and respect, raise their awareness and understanding of bullying behavior and its long-term effects, recognize that bullying behavior is never acceptable. So we will toss it open. And Nadia, I don't know if you're the first hand or I, that's the was, hand from before. Yes, it was from before. I haven't processed this stuff yet. <laughs> then you go ahead and I will turn to Susie. Okay, in all honesty, I don't really like very much of any of that. I think that a lot of what we just spoke about and the purpose has kind of encompassed here. Um, I think, for example, like I had down the last statement of the guiding principles, if a student misbehaves, the language sometimes is, I understand bullying's a behavior, but that is really like, a misbehavior so bad that you're misbehaving. So anyways, I think that a lot of this stuff just needs to kind of go out and be rewritten. I do think that one important point within here is the principal decides on what steps to take to help the student improve his or her behavior. That, that point throughout has to be a little more clearly defined, which I know will go then to an internal policy, um, because this is again, what we're finding is lack of consistency lack of what resources are they using, what students treated what way. And I know that each student is an individual. I'm 100% for that. But that's just something within there, too. I think this is a lot of redundancy. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's just my overall opinion of those sections. <laughs> nope, that's helpful, Susie. Thank you. And um, so I've highlighted overlapping with the purpose not really a big fan of any part of this section. Uh, really needs to be deleted and rewritten. And that in bullet number four, um, really needs a lot of explanation to it because it, there's a challenge in a lack of consistency of application of current procedures um, by school administrators. So there needs to be a lot more specificity and a lot more clarity, including resources. Um, and the process that should be followed. Yeah, like for students. Yeah, exactly. And so, like where it says safety is essential to good learning, um, that's just a very general statement. So, what is safety? You know, people interpret it differently. Is it physical safety? Is it uh, mental wellness safety? You know what I mean? So, I just think that based on what we've done this whole section, we've got a lot of other things to refer to where we could change a lot of that wording. Great, Susie, thank you. And I've got Daryl. Thank you. Um, just a question about process. Um, in the last bullet point, you talk about the principal decides on what's uh, next steps. Um, somebody has to hold the problem within the school, but that puts a lot of uh, pressure on the school principal who may not have the skills or education um, to make an informed decision on the intervention that happens next. And I, I understand it has to go somewhere, but you're asking a lot of a principal who may not know what to do um, in the event of any, any type of bullying. Daryl, it's a great, uh, a great reflection. So I'll, I'll share a bias with the table. Um, that I shared this with one of our groups already this week. I find that statement incredibly challenging um, because of, of, you know, what you've just described. There's, um, it sounds like the principal does this work unilaterally by themselves, independently. And I suspect, as I said, Jason and I both weren't part of the development. I suspect the origins of the statement come from the fact that within the Education Act, it does indicate that the principal is ultimately responsible for everything that happens in the school. So much like they're not in every classroom where teaching and learning is happening, ultimately they're still the ones who are responsible and accountable for what happens in the classroom. 
So I suspect that's the origins of his statement. That being said, um, we know that when there is um, an incident of an incident of bullying that happens in the school, while there is a legislated role the principal has, the principal works with their school superintendent. They work with the social worker. They work with the social work department. They, there are there are so many other individuals. I love your suggestion in consultation with as expanding um, the thinking because the way in which that statement is written, it makes everything sound very independent and unilateral. And I think the other piece that is completely missing from that statement is that um, the student and the parents need to have a voice in the process and they're they're absent from um well they're absent from the guiding principles okay there's another bias of mine coming through um so i i appreciate you raising the the questions around number four, bullet number four and some adjustments we need to make there so thank you daryl was my really long paraphrase okay <laughs> No, and as a sort of an insider, I, I understand that there's lots of co connection with, you know, your mental health teams, your, but this statement doesn't sort of say that. Yeah, no, that's a great, a great flag. So thank you for that. Um, and I have Sue next. Thanks, sorry, I was just making some notes. Um, I do agree with the, the first sort of uh, person who made the comments around language because language is really critical, right? So when you are talking about a student misbehaving, I think you need to identify the exact behavior. Um, it's not misbehaving, it's bullying. Um, I think you need to be that sort of clear with it. There's no real room um, on that definition. Um, and of course, the, the concept of improving their behavior, no, they need to stop with the action. The other piece um, that I put in was, although you've got, you know, you're making a commitment to support the individual who's bullying, I think you need to make a commitment to support the survivor, right? Because I don't think that that speaks, and this part doesn't speak enough, that overall commitment. And it would be nice just from a policy higher end perspective that the board really not just say that they're going to raise awareness because that can mean so little and so much depending on the school, right? So can the board commit to engaging in specific, you know, activities um, that are brought in to help educate kids on gender-based violence or you know, bullying? Um, in my world, violence is violence coming from the women's sector, uh, and then preventative strategies um, that can be dealt with. It. I just think that it's it's too subjective to say, oh, we're going to raise awareness. Well, that could be participating in one event for the entire year, right? Is that enough? Probably not. Great suggestion, Sue. Thank you. So, um, really, no naming the behavior we're talking about. So, um, when we talk, when it speaks very globally to misbehaving, no, let's label it what it is. It's bullying. Um, it's not changing behavior. It's stopping the bullying behavior. Ensuring that the guiding principles speak to the commitment to support the individual who has experienced bullying behavior. Um, or the survivor, and also being clearer around, or actually not clearer, but stronger. Raising awareness is um, a little too, I'm going to say maybe passive, uh, superficial, as opposed to actually concrete actions that will be taken. Is that okay, Sue? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to go to Cindy and then Susie. Thanks. Um, I think the very last one, I agree with all of these. This is this is worded very, very nicely and kind of has flowers on it to make it sound like it's not such a big deal, but it really is a big deal. And I think the last point on there, recognize that bullying behavior is never acceptable. I think recognize that bullying is not tolerated it, or will not be tolerated. It needs to, things need to be a little more blunt in here that this is not going to be accepted. And I agree with the principal decides on what the next steps to improve his or her behavior. You know, it's a lot on their plate, but they need to, we need to expand on that because there is a team, you know, 
behind them. But I think we need to put in there that bullying is not tolerated in the HWDSB or will not be tolerated. Great, thank you, Cindy, for the suggestion. So stronger language, um, language is a little too, um, I'm gonna say, too nice, too flowery, and we need to be explicit that we recognize, recognize that bullying will not be tolerated, period. And an expansion on the statement of the principal to include the uh, collaboration and the other groups in which the principal will collaborate with. Correct? 100%. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Very helpful. And I've got Susie and then Nadia. Susie? Hi, Sharon. Um, so our equity committee is a newer committee, right? And a lot of the stuff is being created new with the fresh, the new, what it needs to be now. So when I read this, um, again, with like students deserve to feel safe, um, about modeling care respectful like there's basic things in here of how you treat people and then there's stuff specific to bullying is it possible uh again in the to make things more universal is part of it but to pull some of the work that has been done around this with the respect um the safety what a student deserves, their rights. Can we not pull from something like the equity policies? And again, because we know they're updated and they're very, you know, overall equitable and, cl and inclusive. And I think that that has to be right across the board. And then this has to be arranged a little bit differently as opposed to like model and caring respectful interactions, respond to incidents of bullying, raise awareness, treat everyone with dignity and respect. Like it just, you know what I mean? So I'm just wondering if that's something that maybe, I don't know if it's within a working group in our, or in our meeting, or if, if we can, you know, uh, again, if people want to do a little bit of their own research to see what we already have in place with that new committee. Mm -hmm. it, no, I think it would take a lot of work out of trying to recreate a wheel. Yeah, that's no, a great suggestion because you're right. A lot of the work of the Human Rights and Equity Committee has been very recent, yes. um, and and a great suggestion that we'll put to the um, to the working group. Next yeah, and time. and their lens again is the human rights and the equity of of every student and employee. Thank you, Sharon. No, great suggestion. Thank you. And I've got Nadia. Yes, thank you. What a powerful panel this is of different uh, expertise here. I'm really glad that I have a, an opportunity to be a part of this. So I just want to say um, the staff, um, gosh, I can't even read my writing here. I was writing so fast. Um, okay, I think it should be part of the policy where there's something, I, I agree with all this flowery stuff. I think it has to be more concrete, like cultivating social emotional practices that encourage and educate instead of just, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, at the Peel District School Board, they they invested in all of these um, plaques and, and postcards and bookmarks and posters that say, you know, inclusive and responsible and respectful. And they had them all over the school. And I used to go into class and say, guys, you guys have all of these signs here. Like what, there's something else that's missing. Let's get to the root of that. And that is cult, a lack of cultivating these practices. I find in education, there's a lot of flowery words and there's not a lot of things that go along with it that actually provide concrete skills. I'll give you another quick example, and this is really important. Um, so one of the character attributes were inclusivity. So, you know, in elementary, I worked all the way up to high school, but I, when, when I worked in elementary, one of the biggest issues is, you know, so-and-so is not playing with me. And then the answer that staff would always be trained to give is, well, there's always room for one more. 
So, which basically creates a pattern in kids to be people pleasers and to like, we're adults, we get to choose who we spend time with and to talk to. And I just feel like we're not preparing kids for the future. We're just making them people pleasers. Oh yes, you can play with me. Oh yes, I'll talk to you. And, and not cultivating that practice of saying no and not, you know, honoring them for not wanting to be in somebody's energy. It's okay. And then the people who are you know, forcing themselves on people are being taught that, oh, hey, I know how to manipulate my way to be controlling and get what I want. And this is actually what's happening. So I like I totally broke all the rules. I was like, hey, like, do you really want to play with someone who doesn't want to play with you? And let's get let's get to the root. Like, what are your beliefs? What are your values? Do you think that if your best friend should always have to play with you? If that's your blueprint, it's not happening. You're going to be upset. That's why there's so much drama. So I, I was only one person, but I would go and get to the root and go to the classes and teach this stuff on a proactive level to empower them, because that's the that's what we want to do here is empower. So um, programs that um, get to the root, I said that. So raise awareness. Yeah, I talked about that and cultivate self-love practices. And yes, I think that's it for now. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that I found is um, foundational here are practices. And this could be in the policy or practices instead of just saying they should be modeling respect is self-confidence, self esteem practices because the reality is whether you're a target or a bully you lack in self-love self-confidence self-esteem people who don't they say hurt people hurt people if you feel good about yourself you're not going to treat people like this and i agree with you susie when you say that you know adults are doing this it's kind of the energy in the building and it's contagious right so i think that's it's really important to have this stuff within the policy so that there could be some changes instead of like a lot of flowery, vague, ambiguous uh, language. Thanks, Nadia. So lots of what you shared really emphasizing on the importance of being more concrete in what's listed, the importance of cultivating social and emotional practices, being um, being very um, practical in the approach in terms of how things are vetted within the classroom and the school, um, expressing the uh, always room for one more approach, not being um, necessarily the best way, the importance of building resiliency in, uh, with students, really getting to the root in order to empower our students and develop that piece around self-confidence and self-esteem. And um, really it's about the culture in the school, the energy that you feel in the building. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you sharing that. And Daryl, I think that's a new hand. It is. Sorry, I, I no. probably buried the lead when I introduced myself. I've also spent 20 years um, working with children's mental health and interpersonal violence, uh, specifically on um, uh, children and adolescents that engage in these types of behaviors. And I'm Again, I understand the constraints around privacy. Uh, I found it interesting in your slide that when you had folks sign up for different working groups, not one signed up for privacy, which is probably the most important piece to all of this. But my question is, should primary intervention be part of the guiding principles? So we talk about responding to incidents of bullying, but can we be more specific in terms of um, these are just sort of my my first sort of thoughts um, in consultation with whoever provide or access uh, primary intervention strategies specifically for the children who are um, doing the bullying or, or interpersonal violence. So we talk about responding to but it's very vague. Um, and again, I know that there's issues in terms of um, pri uh, privacy and 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 making referrals to specific children's mental health organizations around primary intervention um, for interpersonal violence, but I don't know if it goes there. Is I guess my question. It 
it may I'm, I'm hearing a lot of suggestions Daryl around this section needing a complete rework so I think what you're suggesting in terms of the primary intervention um, I think needs to be captured somewhere. It might not be here. It might be further down in the document um, and the responding piece subject to the component around um, privacy. Again, I'm, I'm hearing strongly from the group that it needs to be somewhere, but probably not part of the guiding principles. Um, so we're going to capture it because they're really good suggestions and then we'll we'll make sure that as we're working with the working group, we'll determine with them where those land. So thank you for the suggestion. And I've got Kevin and then I think I might have Susie again and I might have Nadia again or it may be a legacy hand. So I'll leave it to the two of them to decide and I'll go to Kevin. Kevin. Awesome. Thank you. I just wanted to echo what, what Nadia said. Like we work in uh, a lot of the major school boards and school boards are a master of the what but not the how. And a lot of it's fit under this 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 language and these posters and these announcements and something as simple as you know common advice kids get is to walk away from conflict right to walk away um but how are they walking away right and that's just one of of so many examples because we you know i have these conversations daily in elementary and high schools and there's so many examples i can think of where the how is just like not even missed just not talked about and that and that's where all the convert that's where 90% of the conversation should have to happen like we've we've attained awareness like we've i think we can check that box like they know the words they know don't do this do this but where's the in the moment so somebody's saying something to me and you're telling me to walk away but my head's down and i go and i sit on the bench you're telling that person they've affected me right what do i do after and like that's where our program sits in that space and um I am surprised that people find those conversations uh, like, oh, we don't talk. I'm like, so what, what do we talk about then? Right. If we're not talking about this, what do you talk about? So I just wanted to echo what almost everyone's been saying here, just from my experience um, and just keep encouraging that not, my strength isn't, you know, the flowery language. So I'm more interested in the, the practice, the implementation, because uh, that's how I kind of see things. Um, so I haven't added much, but just in general, I wanted to echo what everyone was saying. So thank you. No, thank you, Kevin, for your comments and for reinforcing um, what you've heard from others around the table and really highlighting the fact that we need to be very concrete in terms of what the strategies and support look like for our students um, and very practical and grounded and real. And appreciate your comment about flowery language because sometimes institutions like school boards and us, we can be too flowery. And, and, you know, and, and one of the pieces that I've really appreciated from this group in our conversation is the theme that's coming through is be clear, name it, identify it, and be concrete. The flowery language is not what we need. We need clarity around what is expected, what is expected to change, um, be very explicit about strategies. So the flowery is, is not helpful to anyone and is, it gets in the way. So appreciate, uh, appreciate your comments. So thank you, Kevin. Yeah, and sorry, just to clarify, I think language is fine as long as it's supported through that other piece, because it's important Action. that we can fit everything under a heading and communicate it all have mutual language, but it's got to have the follow through. So thank you. It makes total sense. And I think Nadia, oh, Nadia, is your hand back up? I think I've got Susie first. Can I grab Susie first, then I'll come back. Susie? Hi. I just want to clarify to everybody, I've been working on this stuff with the board for a couple of years, so that's why I keep popping in, I'm not trying to monopolize this by any means. Um, Sharon, I just wanted to clarify, because I think there needs to be a little bit of an understanding. You, uh, We see in this document back in references, and you've um, alluded to it or, or stated it, and we know that the Ministry of Education has guides stuff within school boards to a point and this is a thing that we've come up with across different school boards in and with the ministry of education is oh well these are the guidelines it's up to the school boards how much of this policy is dictated or guided by the ministry of education and how much of this can we make very specific to what we know is happening within our board you know, it's a great question, Susie. So I would say the ministry's guidelines are very high level and very global. 
And so there isn't anything we talked about here this afternoon that wouldn't fit in what the ministry has provided for us globally. Where we have the, um, I would say the least amount of flexibility are in definitions because the ministry states the bullying definition must come from the Education Act. So when it comes to some of the definitions that are included, we have no, I would say essentially no wiggle room on the pure definition because that has to match the Education Act. We can, after the definition that comes from the Education Act, add additional information and clarification if we think that that's important for people to have. So we have to honor that, but we do have flexibility beyond it. We have a lot of flexibility when it comes to the procedures. The procedures would approach the ministry guidelines as a minimum standard, and they would be just that. That's that's the starting point where we go with the procedure, meets the minimum standard, but goes higher. So that's where the greater amount of flexibility is. Um, and I only say that because the ministry the ministry guidelines from a policy perspective, they're very, very high level. So we have lots of, of room to meet that and still be HWDSB specific, even okay. within the definitions. We just have to play with it a bit. Right. Yeah. And and I wanted to bring up that point because I knew the answer already, but I thought it was important to address because as much as we might think this kind of stuff is archaic, the Ministry of Education is still very much with many things back many, well, many years behind where we actually are. So I think it's important as we're bringing through suggestions, if we're focusing on specific areas is to know again, if we're in here, how much room do we have? What are we confined to and mandated? And then like you say, how do we go further to explain it to fit our board? And Susie, I appreciate the question. I mean, one of the reasons why um, Jason and I chose for our group to work through our existing policy and not the ministry document is because we didn't want that to actually further constrain the thinking. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jay and I said, you know what, our job is to take away what people say and figure out how we can make it fit within what the ministry's template is. Um, we just didn't want to be you know, restricted in terms of our thinking. And that's why we're, we kind of said, okay, we'll deal with that. Let's, let's put this out here. And exactly. So I think it's just, again, like I said, very like safety is essential. Like you said, the definition, I mean, that's one thing we all, that'll come up the definition yeah. that is not the definition of bullying, Yeah. but where, you know, where our rights or abilities Completely. lie. So, Completely. okay. Thanks Sharon. No problem. And I'm cognizant of time for folks. So I'm going to go to Nadia and then I'm going to ask a question around next steps. So Nadia, last last comment on this before we, I, we ask a question of the group. Nadia, go ahead. Yes, thank you. It seems like it's hashtag keeping it real today, huh? <laughs> um, and I agree with you, Su Susie. I like working in the system for so many years. It's just like one of those things um, made for moms by moms. So um, I'm wondering, so the ministry, like, for example, in terms of the, all this flowery language, um, is are they not the ones that came up with the flowery language for report cards? Because I think it's all related, right? Because um, it's just, it's to protect a lot of things that are happening now. It's to protect children's self-esteem, but they're not at all resilient, you know? And I just think it's just working um, against kids in as a whole. But in terms of the, I think it was Daryl that was talking about, no, I got the per person mixed up, sorry. Um, walk away and count to 10. That's what they're always told. And it's like, when they just wanna go and punch someone in the face, like, let's be real, they're pissed off, they wanna do this and they're told to walk away and count to 10. So what I was doing was I was going in to do mindfulness practices because it's about training your body. And I think the reason why, you know, they're taught, oh, just room for one more and walk away and count to 10 is because teachers are so busy. You know, admin is so busy. Like, where's the time to really get to the root? I got to the root because I just had the time. I was support staff and this was my passion. But yeah, 
like all with all of this, there is there was no flexibility for me. So I'm glad that they, there's this now with the policies, because that's why I, I actually quit my job, because I was so passionate about it and I wanted to work for myself so I would have the flexibility to create change. So I'm always a resource in terms of even even being a frontline worker for the mindfulness groups and practices and trainings for even mental health for educators you know, like an admin, it's like, this is where it starts. It's the energy in the building. I'm big on that. And if it starts from the top and it trickles down in terms of social emotional learning, I'm seeing that's why I stopped working with kids. And I started working with adults because I realized that adults are just children in bigger bodies. We have all this trauma and all these childhood wounds and we bring it to our place of work and it gets passed down to kids. So just so you know that I'm always available as um, a resource as well, you know, that aligns with the practices that we put into place here. Thanks, Nadia. So I apologize that we're a little bit over and I, you know, Jason and I were thinking, oh, we know we're gonna run short on time, but the conversation was uh, very, very beneficial, very helpful. Um, also really appreciate all of the comments that people shared within the chat. So you can tell that we did not get through the whole document. So we still have intended outcomes, um, responsibility, the terminology section, which as I said, is, is very ministry uh, directed. Um, it's a fairly lengthy section. And then there's the action required or what needs to, uh, to flow at, out of um, the next steps and then the progress indicators in terms of the measurement. So in terms of next steps, we do want to go through with the rest of the document with the group um, because this is important for our working group to have as information for next week and also to inform a first draft which will then go out for broader consultation. So when we were working with the parents, we talked about a couple of different options in terms of working through the rest of the document. Um, one option is, uh, as we said, there will be a Microsoft form that will come out to everyone and you can go in and you can populate it with your thinking around each of the sections. Um, and you can do that regardless, even for the sections we've covered today. The second is we can have another meeting next week. Um, folks now are comfortable with the flow of, of how we're reviewing the document. So you could review the document before, have a sense of where it is you'd like to go. Then we would come together as a group um, for about an hour, hour and a half to work through the remainder of the sections. If you're able to make it, great. If not, that's okay. We're respectful of that. You do have the other vehicle that you can can submit. Keep in mind that the draft document is going to come back to this full table uh, for review as well. So it will return, but we do want to make sure that we've had an opportunity for all of us to go through this, this document fully before the next draft comes back. So the two parent groups, we landed in the place of saying, let's put one more meeting on the books next week. Uh, those who can attend will attend and we will work through the remain, remaining sections. Um, and then if you can't, there is the opportunity to provide your information electronically. So I'm gonna put that on the table as a suggestion and just, you know, whether it's maybe the chat is the best way or if people want to give a thumbs up either virtually or if your camera's on, you could give a real thumbs up in front of the screen. Um, Susie, got a question, comment? Only because I don't have chat ability. It's a good point. Um, sorry. sorry, thanks. I Susie. had no, no, I appreciate you reminding me. Thank you. Not yeah, no, no, does. that's okay. My computer was in and out during the working group stuff, so I don't even really under know who's in what group or how that's being communicated. But you and I maybe could let me know after. If you um, want to wait at the end, I'll fill okay. you in on I I'll fill you in on whether you are on that group or not. And if you want to be, we can always adjust it. Yeah, no, I I'm okay either way. I just want to know so I'm not missing anything. I am uh, very much in favor of what you said of giving us two options of having an online ability if that's what we want and then putting a meeting open to whoever chooses to come. And my suggestion 
if it's not already done, which I'm sure most of us have done, is to go through this and like have us be prepared for the next meeting with writing things down or whatever. That's just my input because I don't have chat. That is perfect, Cindy. Thank you. I just called you Cindy, Susie. Sorry. I was looking at the names. That's okay. I get called Cindy a lot. <laughs> it's a compliment. Nadia, do Cindy. you have a comment on, I on love you too, next Cindy. steps? I'm just looking. I see your yellow box is lit up, which means usually you have your hand up. It could be uh, from before. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's from before. Thank you. No problem. It's all good. Okay, so we will then look at the dual approach. Uh, a meeting for those who are able to attend. Susie, we will adopt your suggestion of uh, folks um, having reviewed the rest of the document, coming with suggestions in various areas. I'm going to try to share a form um, externally and see if maybe we can capture your thinking through that shared document so you can actually see each other's thinking. Um, it's it's sometimes a bit of a challenge when it's external organizations, but we're going to give it a try. And then um, individuals can complete that or they can come face to face and that will work as well. And thank you, Cindy, for letting us know that two o'clock is an, uh, a hard stop for you. So we'll make sure that we book earlier than that as we go forward. So thank you. So thanks everybody. And if anyone wants to stay behind, I know Susie, you want us to do a double check on the work group that you're signed up for. So please do um, really appreciate the time. And we apologize that we ran over, but we'll, uh, we'll see folks next week. Thank you. Oh, Jay, did you want to say something before we wrap? Sorry. No, just thank you everybody. I, and I wish I could have said it earlier. I know we've had folks with other commitments that have left, but I've really appreciated the learning, especially outside of the structures that we're so used to learning in. So uh, thank you all very much. Agree completely. Thanks, everybody. Sharon, I just have to step out for another meeting with the secondary school. Um, do you want to give me a call later or? Are you um, call you on Teams or call you on the phone? Whichever works best for you. OK. Probably uh, just I, either after way. Four. Is, pardon? Just after four. OK, so you're with the secondary group until four. Yep, I'll come and get you at four. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye Jay. And then I know I just want to make sure um, Nadia, you've got some questions. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't know about the work group either, so I thought I would stay for that. OK, I can look up for you and Cindy and Jaleesa. I'm here for the same thing. Same thing. I want to okay, know a little so more. I'm yeah, because I'm not sure if I'm I know Steve's and Kevin are all in a lot of the groups, so I'm just relaying everything over to them. So let me get rid of my share screen because that way we can see each other better. I can't see you until I get rid of my screen. OK, now I can see everybody. Good. Well, hi, <laughs> See what happens when cameras come on. We recognize <laughs> each other. Because I was in and out, I was like, because so Nadia and Jalisa, like some of us know each other from working together over this stuff. So like Kevin, I know Kevin, I'm usually, hi Kevin, hi Sharon. And Cindy, I've been waiting for you to put your camera on. I'm like, yeah. I know, but this is what I've been dealing with for the whole meeting. <laughs> oh my God, that's so annoying. Oh. So trying to read on the phone. Hi, Millie. Aww. I thought the computer turned on. Yeah, just <laughs> leave it. Don't touch it. And of course, now the meeting's over. We've got a screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's always, it's ironic. It always works out that way. Well, it's nice to meet you guys. I'm, I'm from Brampton, and I moved here to beautiful Stony Creek last year. So I'm loving it. I was confused, actually, if I should be on the parent or the community, uh, the community one because I was talking to my son's school um, and then they said to do both or something so I don't know. <laughs> so you're welcome to be in either of them. The um, That's a good question. I had this conversation with Susie too when Susie initially oh. signed up because okay. Susie wears dual hats as well and I, Susie you have a recommendation. Go ahead. Yes I was sorry. You go ahead when you're done. <laughs> no, you go. Um, so Nadia, 
yes, Sharon and I had a very in-depth conversation because of the same thing with Cynthia um, would be in the same position probably as well as part of an organization which brought us to this. I mean, I own my own thing because of my son being a victim of bullying and his mental health. That's why we created our not-for-profit. So I think it's super important to have parent voice. Absolutely. I think that if you have connections, so for me, it was the connection to um, not just the information that I know as a parent, but also of working with other families and working in the community and working with the schools and the school boards. I think not that it's almost like you had said, Sharon, with the ministry, almost like a higher level look at it all comes together, but what can you bring the most? So yes, you as a parent, I'm assuming has a, a child that's been, or children that have been affected by bullying are you oh you are you asking yeah yeah nadia no. sorry no no i i don't i have two boys 20 and 16 it's not that's oh. not the case it was actually me when i was a kid <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, but okay. um but yeah but i've been working with bullies in the schools and the targets i focus on the targets because yeah, i'm yeah. all about empowerment right yeah. but i've got like i said 25 years at pdsb with all of this and i created my own character educational an SEL program that I was putting out there. Literally, like years later, I would like run into my students who were almost in their 20s with tears saying, oh my God, miss, I remember you, you empowered me. And I would, I think about you sometimes and I wouldn't be where I am today. I met one at a political event in Brampton a couple years ago. She was working with politicians. So I am very passionate about this. That's why I said, I'm here if you guys need me to, for anything like, yeah. 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 I would recommend, and I don't know you well, sorry, Nadia, enough at yeah. this point, but I would recommend that you would be in this group. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, there's a lot of new people in this group, to me, from the agencies and the community resources, that is wonderful that we can all connect and they can, like, the intersectionality of everything. Okay. So that would be my suggestion for you is I think you have a lot to offer as a wider spectrum than maybe just, not that, I mean, obviously the parents are important, but it's a different, I think, am I right, Sharon? Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would say that um, I wouldn't attend both because you're gonna find that it's almost, like our agendas are almost identical. Yeah, and I don't we'll have continue. a lot of time to volunteer into yeah. like many things, right? So I would say I would agree with what Susie is suggesting, because if you're thinking about it, if you if you had children in the system right now and you wanted to bring the perspective of a parent whose child was experiencing bullying directly and how the schools responded and what worked and what didn't work, then I would say that's the place for you. If you want to have the conversations around um, you know, what strategically we might want to be thinking about as community partners, as organizations working together, as community, community collaborating together, what's the continuum of support, like about that's this table's conversation. Um, so there will be a point in time when the conversations sort of separate a little bit when we're looking for specific advice as an example around, um, around some of the intervention work or around some of the responding work. And so it will look different. I think, I agree with Susie, I think this is the right group for you. Yeah. Now in terms of, sorry, now in terms of working group, we didn't have a whole lot of partners who responded to the form we sent out. So that's the reason we said we're going to send it out again, because we want to make sure that we hear from everybody and we get it. People are super busy. And we also know for some organizations, the structure of the meeting within this is where they want to provide their influence. So we only had one person from this partner table who signed up for a working group and that's like, Susie, can I talk about you? It was you. I know it was me in spec ed, right? Yeah. I saw the spec ed and there was one and I'm like, uh, I'm okay to be a group of one, but it would be really helpful no. to have more people. <laughs> I mean, and, and of course there are 
there are there are administrators like there's principals and vice principals and we will have students um, the student group is meeting next week so we will have students at the tables too but ideally we'd like to have you know one or two parents one or two community partners Again, it doesn't mean the work will get missed because the work is still going to come here. We have a great representation on like the policy. We have six parents who have signed up to help with policy, which is fantastic, but we don't have any partners at the policy table. That's amazing. And I just remembered what, I couldn't read my writing at the time and I you said something just kind of made me remember what I was gonna say. So one of the things I think is important to maybe include in the policies is like leadership, right? So if we kind of have mentors and train the older students like I used to do this even in elementary not just high school where they're like the ambassadors right for leadership and it's kind of trickling down and and it's great right it's a it's a so, really it's it that came up I want to say that came up in the parent meeting there was a suggestion around um and again this is going to fit more into the procedures but again important the suggestion was rethinking um the peer uh mentorship the peer mentor it was it was called wasn't called peer mentoring in hamilton what did we call it back peer to peer then? support peer mediation so one peer of the mediation one of the things right is that they can get mindfulness ambassador certificates like they can actually be certified and it it looks at 12 key mm -hmm. concepts that are yeah that are related to social emotional intelligence like emotional triggers you know mindful listening all self awareness right all of these are in that 12 week program and they get a certificate so they feel hey i'm accountable now i'm a leader i'm a mindfulness ambassador in the community so this is a, another big thing. I actually am a program facilitator through Mindfulness Without Borders, and it's a great program. Even teachers love it. I've I facilitated to teachers, to psychotherapists, mental health professionals, corporates, parents. It's and it really does align with um, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion as well. So it's just a phenomenal program. I think some of the school boards are actually partnered with Mindfulness Without Borders so that they come to the board. And so I'm one of the practitioners. So that's another um, option. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to start with just like, even like a 10 teachers and I can facilitate like that. It's been such a game changer for me. Like, so it helps with critical thinking, um, resilience, mm -hmm. compassion, and really exploring our deep seated beliefs, biases, and stereotypes that are running the show in our lives. Like I would go, I would work in different schools and I would hear teachers saying, oh, like, well, what's wrong with that kid? Oh, like they're being raised, he's being raised by a single parent, for example. That's an unconscious stereotype. I'm a single mama. <laughs> I'm an amazing yeah. mom. Like, you know, so anyways, that's it. No, that's help. That's helpful. Then that, 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 um, um, that scope of your, your background and your work is really helpful. Nadia, um, Cindy, I know you had, oh, sorry, Susie. No, no, go. You can, Cynthia can go first. That's fine. No, oh, I was just going to, I was just going to say, Cindy. Oh, Cindy, can you hear me? Oh, I can. Oh, hold on. Yeah, okay. I'm so I don't I don't have um, Kevin or Steve signed up for any of the working groups. So are you OK? Yeah, and I don't know if it would be you them. or one of them, but are, I mean, please go back and have a conversation. Um, our groups are never closed. This table's never closed. The parent group is never closed. The student table, the work groups, nothing is ever closed. That's one of the reasons we record and them that's online what because we're trying to get more members and more of our members to attend these groups and stuff like okay. that too. We're kind of we're in a revamping stage, the 999th. So we're okay. we're changing things around a little bit to to work just like what we're trying to do here today and what the board's trying to do we're trying to make things better and how are things going to work now and what do we need to address now and how can we better it for our children in the future awesome. and that's why a lot of this wording needs to sorry but it's garbage oh, i agree oh, you I know agree. So remember, I mean, you know, my kids and that's, me, not, that's why I said I don't take it personally. I wasn't part of my, creating my it. I agree with you completely. I, I, you I read some of it and say, oh, I hate that line, but I have to read it. <laughs> oh, my God, Sharon, you were like the coolest superintendent I've ever met. 
Right? She's a rock star. Right? Oh, my God. She's so, like, real. I love this vibe with you ladies. It's amazing. But, I mean, I we still remember my kids in elementary school just turning around and saying, oh, you filled my bucket. You tipped my bucket. And I'm thinking, no. You mean, thanks for saying that. That makes me feel good. Or, you know what? That really hurt me, and now I'm angry because you were rude and disrespectful. So we need to bring up the blunt forms. Love now. it. It has to be point blank. You know, this child's not mis misbehaving. Just like Susie said, this kid just bullied this kid. I'm going through hell right now with my one child. Susie doesn't even know because I've kept it offline because I've had to legally. But um, like my son's now made history in the board and it hasn't been made public yet because of this. And it's a scary thing. So we need to stop the sugarcoating. Yes. It needs to be addressed. And that's why, you know, I'm here and I've attended the safe board meetings and stuff like that before as many as possible. So that's why, you know, I was asked to be a part of this group because I'm more on this end. Totally Steve has worked so hard with legislation and memorizing all the legislation and stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm actually kind of glad that he wasn't here today so I can attend <laughs> just so nice. I could be a part of it. Well, yeah. is there a, I mean, and again, there's no limits on, um, on membership, Cindy. Like if, if there's a working group or more than one working group that you're in, like, I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen just so you can see them. Um, because you wouldn't have seen them and Nadia, you wouldn't have either. Um, well, you saw them today briefly, but we went into a lot more detail on the in the mm -hmm. first meeting on them. But yeah, if there is, can you see that okay or no? Yeah, yeah. no, uh, I took a screenshot, so I'll be able to see it after. after. Too. Ah, perfect. So, um, yeah, if there's any of these working groups that, that resonates with you and that speaks with you, that and, and it's not just limited to one, mm -hmm. um, even just send an email, a quick email. I mean, Jason's going to send the form out and the form will ask. Okay. But if, if there is something in your thinking, especially if you want to be part of the policy development, because that group is going to be meeting next week, just send an email so we can make sure you get the link. Um, the links to that meeting, I think, went out went out last week. So, um, but again, I, I from the partner table, um, it was a very limited number of people who had indicated. Are you talking about for the next are you talking about for the next meeting, uh, Sharon? So no, so we have, so part of the, the so when you look at the structure, you'll see that we have the, the three kind of yellowish advisory groups. And that is um, our commitment to wanting to ensure that we hear from students, we hear from parents, and we hear from community. So this is our community partner table. Any of the work that happens in the working groups, that work is going to flow through this table. Now, Jason and I happen to be chairing or co-chairing together the policy group, which is why we're the ones who brought the policy discussion here today. But if it was a conversation about healthy relationships and character education, um, David Hoy, who's our manager of social work and mental health, would be the person who would have come here today to say, okay, so I want to run something by the group. I'm looking for your thinking. So. There will be different reasons and different times that working groups will come to the advisory to seek advice, but we also recognize and we really want to ensure that the working groups, those are the ones who are rolling up their sleeves and actually doing the, the bits and pieces, the nuts and bolts. We want to ensure that we have students and we have parents and we have partners working with our administrators and the school staff who are part of the working groups. So you don't have to be on a working group. Some of our parents have said, you know what, I'm going to be at the advisory and that's where I want to engage with the working groups. But then we have some, like I said, we have six parents who said, no, I actually want to sit at the table and be right there as part of the development process. And then our hope ultimately is that, um, you know, well, again, today it is, you know, David and I are who are having, David, don't tell Jason, I called him David, Jason and I who are having the conversation about the policy, our hope would be that down the road, so let's say as an example, Cindy decides that she's going to sign up to be part of the policy group, when this group meets, 
it wouldn't have to be Jason or I talking about it, but it would be Cindy who's talking about or presenting. Okay, so here's the first version of the draft. Can we get your thinking around this or around this or around this? So really, um, you know, us as staff taking more of a listening role, but it's in the early stages of, of growing the working groups. Perfect, Sharon. I just want to put out there and I'm not sure how to reflect because I chose through the, the thing already, obviously. Right. And you can pick others, though. That's OK. Yeah, there's certain things that I'm like, I really want to do the spec ed stuff. Um, you know where my passion is regarding the mental health. But if you have five people or six people in there and say you need somebody in privacy or you need somebody in policy, oh, okay. just tell me where. Okay. You would like a gap filled and I can do it. Oh, that's awesome, Susie. Thank you. Yeah, because like obviously we've worked on this stuff. Yeah. And it all is important. It all intersects. And um, like I said, mental health, but we're working on that other stuff with the mental health as well, which is most important. And, and that's going to have a big impact on the I'm pointing at my chart, you can't see it. Yeah, the healthy relationships <laughs> piece will be connected there strongly. Right. And you know, my not that I don't want to be a part of that. But say, for example, if you already have a good amount of a number of people in there, um, you know where I stand on all that. And that would maybe give an opportunity to hear from other people too, besides just myself. Because I think that everything I bring to you and, and, and David and what you guys know, it's in conversations of wherever mental health fits in, which fits right. in everywhere. So yeah. I just wanted to put out there, spec ed, which I'm the only, the one, that's a really important thing for me. But please just let me know. Pardon? Do you need a helper with spec ed? Yeah, everything you know my kids ed. been through the whole system. Spec ed is fun. It's yeah. very important, and I think that it's super. It's super important. Is Peggy spec involved or whoever was? Oh involved gosh, yeah, Peggy is. Yeah. Lead. So spec ed is an interesting one because the recommendations that were made by the panel were all about um, work that Peggy's team had already started. Mm -hmm. So Peggy is going. To, Peggy is leading all of the work around spec ed, and, and she is almost at the point where there is so this part of spec ed is part of the broader spec ed specialized services plan it's a, a strand or sections right within the plan so that part of the work was fairly defined um, the rest of the work she was working through so we're really close to her for finalizing I want to say finalizing it. She's going to be taking to SEAC soon a draft of the overall specialized services plan for the board. And then we'll be looking at how the different sections within get operationalized. That being said, we also know that when we think about children who have disabilities or accessing special education supports and services, we need to make sure that we reflect them all the way through. So when we're, we're gathering student voice, how do we gather their voice? How See, are we like? How are we excited about, this. about them all the way through the work? Right. So it's and that's true with a lot of the areas. A lot of uh, I mean, privacy is a great example. There's discrete privacy, but there has to be privacy through all the work you through, right? So yeah, and and we know obviously with anything, but with where my thing is, with this back end outside of my child having a, a learning disability plus mental illness and and that it's that is a really hard area sometimes to get the feedback from the families and the students and that's where I found through Nick's journey is that's where I'm a voice for a lot of people be, unless it's a, a very specific thing they need about an IEP or or something um that is really, really hard. A, a lot of students don't even have the ability to recognize it or know it. So, um, and also we know with some of the the kids in spec ed and, and with the exceptionalities is there is an outward um, difference in some of them where they are more of the targets for the bullying and stuff, right? So, and then how it affects their education and their mental health and stuff. So, but anyways, I just, 
Are you able to show Sharon again that chart that shows where you had like uh, the numbers beside what groups? And I just have, can I just, uh, you know, chime in here as well um, about the the bullying response? I would think that it's very much, um, you know, tied to the relationship um, building and character education. Oh, they, they're all connected. To, absolutely. Absolutely. And the bullying response is actually the largest group because they have the most number of areas and the most connections. In I think when we look at it as separate, the way I see it, if we look at it as separate, it's more of a being a reactive damage control approach. But if we're looking at it as a proactive program, then it's connected because if we're practicing all the SEL and the character education, there's got not ever going to be a problem with bullying. Right. It's the it's the proactive piece. Absolutely agree. Sorry, is this what you're looking. This is what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. Susie? So this is. I can't see anybody anymore because now I'm showing my screen. So all oh, I that's can see okay. is the screen. Is this so? This is the response just from our group, or is this the parents as well? No, this is the parent. This is this is ju this is the parents only. Okay. The community group only had one. Is it going to be set? Okay, so the community group meets separately, and the parent group, even for these, even for these things, right? No, so, in the working group, you're combined. Oh, okay, okay, that clears things up. I'd like to be added to the healthy relationship slash character education and the bullying response. But my question is, what's the time commitment for being on two of those platforms as well as the policy building? Yeah, so it's going to. Do you mean policy or do you mean what we did group? today? What we did today. Today's. So that is a great question. And it's going to depend on how each of the groups construct their work plan. So I'm going to suggest that the bullying response group would be probably, gosh, I'm going to say they're going to be probably every every three weeks. Like they're going to be fairly frequent. As will be, um, I'm going to say the healthy relationships one will probably be closer to once a month. Now, in some of the groups, of course, some of the work has already started. And so when the working group comes together, staff will bring you up to speed on the work they've been doing. And then it's about how do we take that work and move it forward. Um, when it comes to the advisory groups, our work is going to ebb and flow. So what we heard, and again, it's going to depend what we hear through that survey. So again, we didn't hear around what this table wanted. What we heard from the parents, shorter meetings, meetings greater too. frequency. So, you know, meet for an hour, but let's meet for an hour every couple of weeks or every three weeks, as opposed to let's meet once a month and have a two hour meeting. So, so with the parent group, um, our frequency will probably be every two weeks. And so that question was posed uh, as um as a meet in a meeting like this. Maybe we could say no. It was a it was a form we sent out after the meeting. Oh, so that you, would be good, like a vote or some a poll or yeah. something. It was confidential and it was private, so people could put yeah. their thinking in. So we're going to send it out again. So hopefully we'll hear back from more people and get a sense of what this structure should look like. I would say that in the beginning, um, the frequency will be greater in this structure. And the reason for that is because some of the work of staff has already been happening. So for example, when we look at the area of um, bullying response, we our our social work services team spent a large part of last year developing a alternative to suspensions program um, for grade seven and eight students who demonstrate bullying behavior but it's about not only the student who demonstrates it it's about uh, learning and support for the student who experiences it and then the third component which is in development is supporting those who witness and so that work was developed a, was developed in the last school year is being piloted this year, but now as our structures are up and running, that group is going to go to the bullying response table to talk about. So let's you know, and so things will. I'm going to say the work is going to be a little bit front end loaded for the advisory tables because things are going to flow quickly to them, and then we're going to start to see more of a regular pattern emerge. I would say probably by September. Hmm. 
Hi, Jason. And again, <laughs> there's never a time when you can't join. Sorry, Jason's here to say, okay, your 3.30 wants to know where you are and I'm your four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sharon, can I just add quickly is I'm just wondering if how many people in our community group here are really up on what is happening, what has been happening, what the policies are, what, because I'm finding um, like maybe some of these meetings we have is going through that kind of stuff to get people up to date. So we have to take that into consideration. And it's different for me. It's different for Cynthia, who are yeah. like, we've been in the thick of this for two years at least with everything that's changed and the safe school meetings and stuff, right, Cindy? And so I'm just thinking that we need to take that in into consideration for our group. I, yeah, but I what, think that's one of, sorry, Cindy, go ahead. I think what you had said earlier when everyone was here, by sending the information out so they can make the notes, so it's all read in advance. Like I have read the poll, I read today's thing this afternoon when I got it emailed, when Steve emailed it to me, um, but be prepared. So everyone yeah. that are in the group meetings are prepared so we can rummage through it, not as fast as possible, but to be able to get more accomplished that our notes are right there and we don't have to repeat and go back and explain anything. If we know what's going on in advance, do go, let's get, let's start making, get the ball rolling and help. Okay. That's a good norm, Cindy. Like that's a good no a good stated norm to put in our meetings that you know everyone everyone has and from we'll make sure people have things well in advance prepared and i really want to try um so in some groups when we do the external forms it works sometimes it doesn't so i think i have found a way that if you don't have a microsoft account we can still create the external forms and you can enter into them and i think that will help a lot because then you know, Cindy, you log in, you put in your thinking, and then the next day, Nadia logs in, and she can see everything that Cindy has already said and go, oh, agree, 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 I want to add this. So when it comes to the table, we have a document that has, it's already speaking to, you know, this is what seven mm -hmm. people have agreed with this statement that Cindy made. Okay, we know that that's a really strong thing that we need to be building in. And there still is the the conversation is still super important and being able to add at the table is important but then it will get us into a bit of a regular rhythm because um susie to your point there is a little bit of um i'm going to say sort of backing up to make sure everybody has the same understanding mm -hmm. um for sure yeah and i think sharon too which i noticed today is when we had talked about like policy and procedure is some people come in with more of a focus on procedure and strategies some people come in um i again i'm just going by myself of doing the work i understand this differently but i know other people that have like the jobs outside they don't have the time they are you know able to uh, maybe dedicate it because of their jobs and everything else they're doing there, etc. So anyways, I know you have to go. I'm just wondering, Sharon, would you like me to be part of the work, sh work group on the policies? Did you say you need representation yeah. from the community? Yeah, if you're if you're available and it's something you'd like to yeah. do, um, it'd be great to have you there. Like I said, spec ed, I know I'm all about the mental health, but in this case, spec ed's my definite thing I want to be on. I would go on privacy too. I can fill out the form again if you're going to send it out. I'm only laughing because Jason always says nobody wants privacy. Oh, oh hey, well, you, <laughs> you and I've had many conversations about privacy over. <laughs> Sharon is actually, you're the one who really explained it to me and, and helped me to understand what it was really all about yeah i'm so curious now like what is this whole privacy thing pertaining to what are what is this in regards to i would say so it, it's about a lot of different things but it's about ensuring that in all of the groups there is a reflection of their work around privacy but i would say the biggest challenge nadia is a misunderstanding that often exists around privacy when it comes to incidents of bullying 
and really ensuring that we are creating toolkits and resources for our schools. So our schools are sharing information with families and with students um, that that they can share because our experience is we undershare um, because we think we, I say we, yes. schools undershare yes. because they think that there are things that they can't say, but that they can. Um, and then connected, and that also connects very closely to data collection and reporting because we also need to be looking at how and what gets captured in a student's file with respect to involvement around incidents of bullying. Um, who has access to that information? It's so and they kind of turn it. That's mandated. By, is that mandated by the ministry or the school yeah, board? Part. No, but by the ministry. And again, the ministry would be a minimum requirement um, when it comes to what gets reported. But again, and we talked a little bit, I can't remember who mentioned bias a little bit earlier today. And in Susie, it may have been you, and inconsistencies from school A to school B in terms yes. of, of application. And, and again, the same it's is true even, when it comes to yeah. Privacy and and reporting, and so we want to make sure that we bring that a consistent standard everywhere. Yeah, it's universality, right? Like I said, Sharon, yeah. with the equity, taking the equity committee stuff and and the newer stuff, and just there's some stuff that can just be very blanketed across. Um, uh, and again, just I think that it was Daryl that had mentioned about principles, and of course, my back immediately was like, well, then why are you a principal? But then I took myself out of that as a parent and I understood is they're looking for the same things. Teachers are looking for the same things. There's policy, which should just be honestly universal. Procedurally is different. Yeah. So, I would say and that even, even from school to not just school to school is different, but even within a school building, people are doing things a different way and not yeah, conforming yeah. to the standards, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah. if it's ministry yeah. mandated, then I guess and no one really has a, a choice in the matter, right? Well, it shouldn't be. Well, but, you know. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But then if you talk exactly. to the ministry, they always say, well, it's the school board's responsibility. So Everything that's another there's conversation. So, there's, there's so many blurred lines. There really, really is a lot of blurred lines, right? And it's and, and there is like a lot of just flowery type. Oh, this looks good. This sounds good. And there's no accountability and there's no reinforcement of, of things. Right. It's just well, it's like, yeah. Yeah. And so that's, and that's, I'm sorry. And that's, sorry to interrupt. And I have to go. I have therapy. <laughs> Go ahead, Susie. I'll add you, I will add you to the group. My my parting comment is the performance monitoring group. Their job is going to be to figure out how do we actually monitor that we're doing everything we say we're going to do it and that we're actually improving outcomes for kids because that's the ultimate goal. So to your point, Nadia, around, you know, ministry says, school board says, at the end of the day, we all have a shared interest of eliminating bullying and making things better for kids. And, and we know that's a journey, but the performance monitoring group will help us to say, are we making improvements along the way? How are we checking in to make sure it's getting better? How are we making sure it's getting more consistent? How that's their purpose. And there's only one person there. So that is a plug for someone. Yeah. It's like, like what, 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 what if this happens, like what, if things improve, what will that look like? Right. So just being really that's super that's specific true. and kind of reverse engineering it. Right. That's what that, that's what that's, that's exactly. so, so your privacy has gone from zero to one. Just saying. Signed up for privacy, Susie? Yeah, like I said, honestly, Sharon, anywhere that I'm needed, like there might be times where I might have to miss a meeting or catch up on it, but um, I'm open yeah. to fill in the gaps. Cindy, are you saying you want privacy too? Yes. yes. As long as okay. meetings are after two o'clock, we're good. I can hit anything. Oh, did you say before two o'clock or no, after? After, after two. Oh, I thought you wrote before. Oh, no, no. I started work to go at three, four o'clock. Oh, what? I got it. Busy. Okay, so I'm gonna put you down then, Cindy, for privacy too. Okay. Yeah. So anything that's available that's after two, because I start work at anywhere between three and four in the morning. So it's the early oh. bedtime. So these meetings are awesome. Got it. Okay, because I can be totally active that where people that have the nine to five cannot be. 
Got it. Well, and I think what we were trying to do with our work groups, Jay, what did we establish as sort of the standard for the work groups? Four to six? Yeah, we wanted to, because we have students in them as well, so we wanted yeah. to uh, make sure that students had a time to settle in. and. Which is awesome, because I know my kids would join in even because Lily when she's been since she's been home has been eavesdropping the whole time well but, there's new uh there's new invites that went uh board wide city wide today so I saw that I just said I sent it over when I saw it during it was during the meeting and I just had I'm waiting on emails and I saw that so I texted it to my son and he's just like okay I'll be there so I'm like, awesome. perfect. And he's in transition to grade nine next year. So awesome. this is, and there's so much that's going on with him, you know, internally that this is such a great thing to be involved. We we know love right. to both, we'd love to have both of them involved. So we're on a roll. Okay. Thanks okay. everybody. Sorry. See, I have yeah, to go too, but it was meetings, lovely meeting both dinner. of you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.